Welcome into the On3 studios here in Nashville, Tennessee. It is Monday morning, and guess what? LSU now has the number one ranked recruiting class in the 2025 cycle. They move into the top spot because number one overall recruit, Bryce Underwood, announced his commitment to the LSU Tigers on Saturday. We're going to cover it all on the show. We got a lot to cover. I'm excited about it. We're going to get going here in a minute, but do me a favor. Hit subscribe to the On3 Recruit channel. Look at this. We're almost to 40K. You guys can help us get there. Hit subscribe for me, please. All right. Where do we want to start? Uh, let's start with the All-American Bowl out in San Antonio, which was played on Saturday. You guys know how the game goes. It's split east-west. West won the game 31-28. A ton of talent out there all week. And Charles Power, On3's Director of Scouting and Rankings, he was out in San Antonio, and he has a top performer list. But before we cover that, Let's talk about some of these big announcements. They took place during the second half of the All-American game. Two big commitments that we've been waiting for. We've been covering it for the past few weeks. Who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about number 48 overall cornerback Zay Mincy. The question was, could Florida teams keep him in? Florida, Florida State, Miami, all involved. Florida, Miami, maybe a little bit out in front of uh, Florida State. But in the end... Alabama starts trending. It started happening about last week around this time. Some picks started going in, and the word was Zay Mincy was leaving the state of Florida, and on Saturday he committed to Bama. Great get for them. Rangy, versatile corner heading to Tuscaloosa. Now the other big commitment we were watching was number 188 overall, running back Daniel Hill. And guess what? He chose Alabama over South Carolina and Mississippi State. He goes six foot, 235 pounds, big back from Meridian, Mississippi. Going to be really interested to watch him develop in Tuscaloosa as well. So Daniel Hill and Zay Mincy both commit to the Crimson Tide. But, of course, that wasn't the biggest news of the day. The biggest news, though, was overshadowed by number one QB and the number one overall player in the 2025 class, Bryce Underwood, committing to LSU. Now, that wasn't at the game, so let's get back to the game. Now, Charles Power put together a top performer list. You see it right here. Overall MVP, TJ Moore, he's heading to Clemson, uh, dominant wide receiver, really put on a show all week during practice, capped off with a sensational showing in Saturday's game. Very productive at six foot two, 195 pounds, elite ball skills, natural hands, great route runner, going to be a versatile weapon in that Clemson offense. And then, of course, at number two, Jeremiah Smith. Enter the week as the top ranked player. That's not going to change. He lived up to the hype. Six foot three, 210 pounds. Looks like he was built in a lab and he didn't have a whole lot to prove. But when he got out to San Antonio, he was taking a ton of reps and worked hard all week. That's what you like to see out of the number one overall player in America. Number three on the list, offensive lineman Cooper Cousins. He was dominant all week. He's heading to Penn State, physically dominated during the one-on-one, -on -one, showed great burst and power off the line. He's a great pickup for James Franklin in that staff up in Pennsylvania. Number four, safety Coy Parrish. Now, there is a lot of buzz around his name over the last couple weeks because he's committed and ended up signing with Minnesota. But Ohio State got him on a late visit. Florida State got him on the visit right before the dead period, but... He ends up signing with Minnesota, a great get. Now, he had a diving pick on the goal line, a bunch of pass, pass breakups, showed he's a playmaker in the secondary and was flying around. Just an all-around fun prospect to watch throughout the week. And then at number five, Edge Deshaun Warner. He's heading to Kansas, one of the most dynamic pass rushers out in San Antonio. Quick off the ball, had great moves, picked up two sacks in the game, a stock-up type performance from him, already ranked in the top 200, so we'll see if he can move up. At number six, you got safety Aaron Flowers heading to Oregon. Seven, Zay Mincy, who committed to Alabama. Edge Marquise Lightfoot looked excellent. He's heading out to Miami. Cornerback Zabian Brown, Alabama in Kingston. Viliamu Asa, linebacker, headed to Notre Dame. That rounds out the top 10. Now, comment section below. Who do you think? Who was the best of the best out in San Antonio? Who was your top performer? Let me know. Comment section below. All right. After the game ended. It cleared the way for what everybody's been waiting for. It wasn't at the game, like I said, but it was in Belleville, Michigan at Bryce Underwood School. I'm sure everybody by now has seen it. Underwood committed to LSU. We'll have Shay Dixon from the Bengal Tiger on the show to talk more about it. But man, LSU off to a blazing hot start in 2025. 
wide receiver DeCorian Moore, the number one wide receiver in America in the 25 class, he committed to LSU about two months ago. Then last week, it was Harlem Berry committing to LSU, the number one running back in America. And that just paved the way for Saturday. The number one quarterback in America, Bryce Underwood, commits to LSU over Colorado, Michigan, Alabama. There was others, but this one, this one was LSU's to lose down the stretch, and they are now currently sitting at number one overall in the on three 2025 industry rankings. So Great show coming up. We're going to talk more about it with Shay Dixon the, on the LSU side of things. We also have Jeffrey Lee from Auburn Live and Tennessee insider Matt Ray to give us some transfer portal updates. All right, let's get it going. Brian Kelly did it. On Saturday, about 4.30 p.m., the number one quarterback in America announced his decision in Bryce Underwood. He's an LSU Tiger, and now LSU has the number one class in the country. But in this video, we're going to find out what is next for LSU. That's why I'm bringing in insider Shay Dixon. But first, LSU fans, what a time to follow recruiting. Hit subscribe for me to the On3 Recruits channel. We're going to be doing this thing all year round. We want you to be a part of it. Hit subscribe for me, please. All right. Let's bring on the man himself, Shay Dixon from the Bengal Tiger. Now, Shay, we're going to take me behind the scenes of this Bryce Underwood recruitment. We know he took visits. We know there was a longstanding relationship. But when did you know? When did it hit you like, hey, LSU is going to land the number one quarterback in America? I think if I look back on it, and yes, look, you mentioned the visits. He goes from Michigan to Louisiana four times in the span of six months. He did it on very important weekends, mm -hmm. like his mom's birthday, his parents' anniversary. He was at the Bayou Splash recruiting event, which was their big kind of end of the summer deal. And then he was at a game. So all of those things led me to believe, hey, LSU's in really good position. And then Josh, I'll couple that with, they had the number one offense from about a month in all the way till the end of the season. And now they finished with the number one offense. They had a Heisman winner and Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I think I still would probably go back to around the same time. Uh, someone, I can't remember his name, might be the host of this show, put in his pick, the very first pick on Underwood to land at LSU. And that's that I entered this season thinking it was a 50-50 battle with LSU and Michigan. When in November, Michigan took a quarterback, from Car or a quarterback commitment from Carter Smith, who is no scrub, one of the best quarterbacks in America, it sort of felt like a waving the white flag on Underwood. And after that, it became clear to me that, hey, if Michigan, the in-state team, is going to go ahead and say, hey, look, we like Carter Smith. We don't really love where things are trending with Bryce Underwood. Let's get him on board. That told me that the work LSU had done was probably going to be enough. And then I look up and they have the number one offense. They're about to have a Heisman winner. All of these different things really then made me feel good about it from then on out. So I'll say when yeah. Michigan took a quarterback commit, that's when I felt very good about LSU's chances. All right. And and to everybody that, you know, wants to give me the credit for putting in the first picture, go ahead. Give me all the credit. But in reality, I understand it's a lot different for Shay's perspective being the site publisher. I'm not a site publisher. I'm not on the message boards every day. I don't have to answer these questions every single day. So, of course, when I felt good about Bryce Underwood to LSU, one of the first phone calls I made was to Shay Dixon to say, hey, am I crazy about this? And, you know, Shay was definitely on board. But for me to put in a pick for LSU that early, it, 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 there's a lot less pressure on me. So, Shay, you've had this thing covered. You were confident in the same time frame that I was. So I just wanted to make sure people knew that uh, you're just as plugged in. Well, go to the page and see uh, my confidence score was at 90%, Josh. So I really let it out there. <laughs> all right. Now, I got to ask this, and, and, and all the LSU fans on the message board are going to be mad at me for asking this, but I got to because of the day and age of recruiting are, that we're in. Is Bryce Underwood's commitment going to be one of those things where the LSU staff is constantly going to be having to hover over him and, and, and recruit him and keep him recruited or keep him committed? Or does Bryce Underwood have the ability to be the bell cow of this class to go out and recruit for LSU from now until National Signing Day? Look, I think it can be a little bit of both. Here's the dirty little secret of college recruiting, and it didn't just start in the NIL era or any of that. 75, 80% of your class is being recruited nonstop by the coaching staff. Because even when you get that commitment, other schools want visits, other schools want 
to at least get an in-home visit or whatever it might be, invite them to summer camp, all these different things where they get them to campus. So when we're talking about really, honestly, I feel 70 to 75 percent of a class, there's no doubt that the number one overall prospect in the country who's a quarterback, other teams aren't giving up. So mm -hmm. yes, LSU is going to have to continue to say, hey, look, every day we're on the phone with them, we're talking to them, we're keeping an open line of dialogue about where the program's headed, how we see him fitting. Uh, but I think right now LSU fans can enjoy this one because Bryce made his decision. He had plenty of time to make it. Um, you can say, even though he is the number one quarterback, that quite often when quarterbacks make a decision, they don't usually flip. We have seen instances of it here recently. Sure. But look, Bryce Underwood has said, even after his commitment, he said, I'm an LSU Tiger for life. And I honestly believe that he sees LSU from a personality, from a, you know NFL, from a competitive SEC, all these different levels of fit. I think he sees that at LSU. So I would feel good right now about them holding on to him. And yes, we are 12 months out from signing day. Yeah, and you should. Hey, we're in the wake of his commitment. There's no reason right now to be talking about a decommitment or a flip. But when that time comes, we'll, we'll be sure to cover it here on the Inside Scoop. All right, moving on. LSU stacking number ones at their position. Number one quarterback, Bryce Underwood. Number one running back, Harlow Berry. Number one wide receiver, DeCorian Moore. But Shay, what is next for LSU fans? Who do they need to get excited about? What recruit is now target number one? I think you turn the focus, obviously, to defense because you'd like to see some guys get on board. And that's really something we'll figure out at, with this coaching change. Look, they just named Blake Baker oh, as yeah, DC. They still have to fill out an entire defensive staff. So right. if that's on pause for a second, that makes sense. But Jabori Antoine in Louisiana is the number two corner in the country. If there's a position LSU really, really would love to land a guy at that's kind of a five-star caliber guy, in addition to who they have, it would be at corner. So Jabori Antoine from 45 minutes down the road here in Baton Rouge, uh, over into Iberia, an hour drive, however fast you go on the interstate. Uh, mm -hmm. That's your backyard. You should be able to lock up a guy like that. That'll be priority number one. But then I would just expand to all of Louisiana and East Texas. That's where they've put in a ton of work. It's a deep Louisiana 2025 class. It's a deep East Texas class. So I think if they can continue to build on that momentum, that'll be key. But as I've said many times before, and now that he's on board, what does a player like Bryce Underwood, the number one overall prospect in the country, what sort of attention does that draw from other recruits? And that can mean a more national approach to at least a couple of players in this class. All right. Before I let you go, let's rewind to 2024. Remember, that cycle doesn't end officially until February 7th when National Signing Day is on LSU, currently sitting at number seven overall with a big push from Don McKinley. It brought them from number nine to number seven. <coughs> Shay, can we see this class finish top five? What's going on? Is there a big piece of the puzzle still left out on the board? A top five finish would probably mean another five star, and that's Terry Bussey, who's been committed to the Aggies. And look, LSU flipped four A&M commits a cycle, but they still are chasing one more. He's been a standout at Timpson. He's listed as an athlete, one of the best players in the country, and he's mm -hmm. still available. Committed to A&M, and Josh will remember, he and Dominic McKinley were two A&M commitments who said, I'm not signing early. I want to wait till February to see yeah. how things look. Well, Dominic McKinley out of Louisiana has already flipped LSU, a five-star defensive tackle. That's four players that LSU has flipped out of A&M's class, and all being pretty big ones, uh, including Gabe Relliford, another D lineman here in Louisiana. But you look ahead to February signing day, certainly Terry Bussey jumps out, as I said, an athlete. They could really use him in the defensive secondary. So safety, maybe nickel, one of those positions. But he is a dynamic player. I will say out of all the A&M guys that seem to have committed to the Aggies, he's one we always thought would end up there. So it's no surprise he's still committed. But he's giving other teams a look, a number of SEC teams. LSU's in that mix. They'll try to get him back in campus in January. They've already had the official visit. But are they able to shake things up one more time because – Four flips from one school is a big, big deal in one cycle. Can they get to five? We'll see. I still think that Bussy is a guy who wants to be at AM, but does he see it as a fit there? And I'll say this too, Josh. We'll bring a little coaching stuff into this. Who does LSU hire in the secondary? And could it be a guy whose name's been tossed around, TJ Rushing, 
who was A&M safety's coach, who was recruiting Bussy and didn't get retained by Mike Elko and that staff. So there could be more at play here than just Bussy. It's also what Bussy said. I want to see how all of these staffs come together defensively. Yeah. Then I'll make my decision. I think those sort of things are wrinkles that people may not pay attention to, but if it happens or if things fall in certain directions, a team like that can suddenly surge. Yeah, and I certainly see a path for LSU to potentially finish with the top five class. What a finish it would be already adding Dominic McKinley is huge on the defensive line, but adding somebody like a Terry Bussey, a five-star athlete out of the state of Texas would be huge. A lot to follow in the month of January. Shea Dixon, thank you for dropping by today on the Inside Scoop. Yep, we'll do it again soon. Thanks for having me, Josh. Another busy weekend out on the plane. So let's talk Auburn recruiting and recent transfer portal developments. In this video, I got insider Jeffrey Lee to break it all down with me. But first, Auburn fans, hit that subscribe button to the On3 Recruits channel. An exciting time out on the planes. Need you to be a part of it. Hit subscribe for me, please. All right, let's bring on Jeffrey Lee of Auburn Live. And we are going to start with some transfer portal talk. Caden Salter looked to be leaving Liberty. He's a quarterback, but announced that he is not leaving Liberty and he is heading back. Now, Auburn sort of tipped their hand earlier in the week with the pursuit of Cam Ward. So what does Auburn do now at quarterback, if anything? It's a great question, Josh. And, you know, I think the last time I was on here, maybe a week ago, it didn't look like Auburn was going to go after a, a transfer quarterback. Right. And I think they tested the waters, obviously, with Cam Ward. They, are, they tested the waters, in my opinion, with Caden Salter. They brought in C.J. Daniels. And mm -hmm. I'm not so sure they didn't sneak in Caden Salter. Now, I haven't confirmed that, but there was some a mystery visitor on campus the same day as C.J. Daniels. And, of course, later that night is when Caden Salter announced that he would be returning to Liberty. Hmm. So what does Auburn do at quarterback? Of the guys that are in the portal right now, I don't see Auburn pushing hard for any of them. Um, it just seems unlikely at this point that they take a transfer quarterback because there's just not anybody available – that I think really moves that ceiling up for Auburn in that quarterback room. Now, for Auburn fans that have been following this closely and for Auburn fans that saw the uh, the bowl game against Maryland, they want a quarterback. They want to feel better. They want some hope. They don't have a lot of confidence in Peyton Thorne, and Peyton Thorne in 13 games didn't give them a lot of reason to have confidence. Mm -hmm. So if Hugh Freeze doesn't add a portal quarterback, there's going to be a lot of eyes on that position come next fall. And, you know, there's there, there's there are a lot of fans that think he needs to add a quarterback. And, you know, fans know more than the coaches, obviously. It, all the always time, have, especially always, on the message board. But you will also have that have, spring always. window. You also have the spring window for the transfer portal as well. Yeah, and then that's when they brought Peyton Thorne in last year. It's actually in the summer he didn't get here. So he, 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 was, he was kind of a late addition. Right. But I feel like if you were going to add a quarterback who isn't familiar with the system, a – uh, Caden Salter, a guy like that who knows Hugh Freeze's system. If you're gonna, if you're not going to add a guy who has some background, some history with Hugh Freeze, you'd want to get him in to go through the spring. So uh, maybe he just wants a guy to compete with Peyton Thorne in the summer. Uh, but as of this early window closing, I just don't see it. Unless it's mm -hmm. something that we don't know, Josh, I just don't see it right now. Yeah, well, we'll see. Very interesting uh, narrative to kind of follow. Will Auburn or will they not take a quarterback? Hey, we saw them take Peyton Thorne over the summer, so we'll see what happens there at the position. Now, let's stay with Liberty transfers. Redshirt junior wide receiver C.J. Daniels is another one leaving Liberty. He's 6'2", 200, one of the most productive wide receiver options in the transfer portal right now, and he is highly coveted. Visited UF, Auburn, and Texas this weekend. Jeffrey, what are your sources saying when it comes to C.J. Daniels? Well, we got to talk to him. Cole Pinkston did talk to him after the Auburn Auburn visit. He said all the right things. Nothing really uh, revel uh, no, no no big revelations coming out of it. As I said, I'm not so sure that that wasn't a tie-in with maybe Caden Salter at the time when Caden Salter was in the transfer portal. He left Auburn, went to Florida. I think he's supposed to visit Texas as well. Um, I think Auburn's in it, but man, I think it would have uh, uh, I, I think it would have went a, a lot longer ways if you would have gotten this quarterback. Um, mm. Plus, Auburn's got um, a couple of transfer uh, wide receivers already committed. They've got a huge wide receiver class coming in from the high school ranks. I just don't know where C.J. Daniels would fit in on that. Not that they wouldn't yeah. take him. I just don't know that C.J. Daniels is looking for a full wide receiver room. 
um, which includes a couple of transfers. Yeah. Not, like you said, already two transfer wide receivers, and they're still <laughs> recruiting five-star wide receiver Ryan Williams, who will right. be on campus in just a few weeks. So there's a lot going on in the wide receiver room. All right, let's move to offensive line. It appears Michael Tarquin, who is leaving USC, is now off the board. It, it, it appears he's heading to Oklahoma. He's committed. Sure. Mississippi State offensive lineman, though, Percy Lewis. He was on campus at Auburn on Saturday. How many is Auburn looking to sign? Are they out on Tarquin? What about Lewis? What's going on here? Yeah, you know, they never really generated a lot of buzz with Tarquin. They, they, they publicly offered him, trying to get him in for a visit. Uh, obviously, that didn't work. He hasn't visited, at least that we're, we're aware of. And it looks like or appears to be he's headed to Oklahoma. Okay. Now, offensive line, they had some guys in earlier in the visitation window back in December uh, committed out, so it really didn't push hard for those guys. They want a guy who can come in and play tackle and help maybe um, move that offensive line around. I think there's some guys at Auburn right now that they would feel better about maybe at other positions, maybe a Dylan Wade, a more prototypical interior guy. Right. They would like to get a guy on the outside to maybe push him inside to where he's more natural and probably will play in the NFL. Percy Lewis being six foot six, six foot eight, whatever he is, he's a mammoth. Um, <laughs> Offensive tackle, they brought him in. You know, he was supposed to go to Ole Miss. Um, he went to Arkansas. He's been to Auburn. I think he's going to make his decision as soon as Sunday, January the 7th. Josh, I think it's Auburn or Arkansas for him. And certainly we are on high alert for Percy Lewis at Auburn. Uh, okay. So I think maybe get a tackle, yeah. and maybe that might be it. Everybody's looking for it right now, but hey, we'll see what Auburn can pull out of the portal. You never know. Now, what happened with A.J. Harris, the former five-star cornerback in the 2023 class, is leaving Georgia, and when he announced before the new year, it seemed like it was a wrap. He was going to head to Auburn, most likely. We knew he might take some visits, but since then, he has taken some visits, and it seems like Penn State is trending. Yeah, certainly Auburn is trending downward. I actually took him off the board Wow. Uh, this past week, you know, last week we were talking about Josh. I said, you know, the, the longer this goes on, typically is yeah. not a good sign for that school. And it just kept going on and nothing happened. And you're going, something's going on. Now, mm -hmm. and again, we talked about this last week, but the position, there was some miscommunication, maybe some misunderstanding about where Auburn projected him and maybe where he thought he made a better fit. Um, uh, maybe NIL was a factor there, but we have certainly uh, seen the fall off of A.J. Harris at Auburn. I changed my pick. Um, and, and I truly believe A.J. Harris had intended to enter the portal, visit Auburn, commit to Auburn, and, and enroll in Auburn. I think yeah. that was kind of the plan initially. But something uh, something came up, whether it be NIL or whether it be position. But uh, I've changed my pick to Penn State. I, I know it's not going to be Auburn. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and you're right. In the transfer portal, it seems like either these transfers either commit on that first visit – and if they take another, if they take another, then that team that got that first visit, the chances go down and down and down every time they step on another campus. It seems like a lot of transfers are just looking for that place. Hey, if I can step on this first campus and I like it, I'm going there. That's what, that's what it looks like. And if, if they leave, the, and, and you know, Robert Lewis was a great one of that. He visited Auburn. Two hours later, he committed. You yeah. see that a lot. And, and I think fans, at least our subscribers, our members at Auburn Live, kind of have picked up on that. Like if a kid leaves and hasn't committed within 24 hours after exiting, typically it's not a good sign. All right, so Percy Lewis is on the clock then because his visit wrapped up on Saturday. So we'll see what happens over the next 24 to 48 hours with him. Uh, last question for you. What do you consider the biggest need Auburn still has left to fill? Defensive line. Do you line? really think so? I mean, tight end is obviously a, 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 a position of need as well, but it's not a huge position of need. It's mm -hmm. not an immediate impact position for this next fall. I think defensive line is absolutely crucial for Auburn in this transfer portal right now, maybe again in the spring, but they've got a commitment from Gage Keys. Isaiah Rakes, the Texas A&M defensive lineman, is supposed to make his decision fairly soon. Uh, and they brought, also brought in they brought in Rakes for an official visit. They brought in Tommy Durajai from West Virginia. They also snuck in, they're not really snuck him in, but Trill Carter from Texas also came in for a visit. So keeping an eye on those three guys, I think Auburn would like to add at least two. All right. Well, Jeffrey Lee with Auburn Live, thank you for dropping by the inside scoop. It was a busy weekend out on the plains and it could be an even busier 24 to 48 hours in the transfer portal. Thank you for dropping by today. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate you having me. 
Tennessee is looking for help on that offensive line, and it seems like they're involved in every big name that hits the transfer portal. And this weekend, they had one of the top available offensive linemen on campus, the Lance Hurd, but he wasn't the only one. And I got Matt Ray from VolQuest in this video to talk about some of the major developments happening right now in Knoxville. But first, Tennessee fans, hit subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. It's recruiting, it's transfer portal. We're covering it 365 days out of the year. Hit subscribe for me, please. All right, let's welcome in Matt Ray. And Matt, we're gonna get to Zlan's herd in just a minute. But first, Percy Lewis, he's a he's an offensive tackle leaving Mississippi, Mississippi State. And I'm hearing some rumors that Tennessee's thought to be involved. What's the latest with him in Tennessee? Yeah, Percy Lewis will be on campus in Knoxville this weekend is the expectation as Tennessee continues to swing, um, like you said, Josh, for every big name offensive lineman, especially at the tackle position that goes into the portal here. Um, so, you know, Tennessee will get their shot with Percy Lewis as several other schools are involved this weekend. But from a standpoint of what he brings to the table, he meshes with everything that Tennessee's looking for in, in a tackle body. And like I told you last week on the on three round table, to me, moving forward for Nico Iamaliava, he has the weapons surrounding him. Now Tennessee's got to keep him upright. Yeah, and they're trying to. And, you know, Percy Lewis, he – I talked to Jeffrey Lee from Auburn Live yesterday, and the expectation was that he might be ready to commit coming off that visit. But you and I know how it goes. If you don't commit in that first 24 to 48 hours after that trip, that time – that window might have closed. So now if he makes it to Tennessee, which we expect this weekend, the Vols do have a good shot here. Now let's talk about somebody else that was on campus, Armaj Reed Adams. He, he was on campus but committed to Texas A&M over the weekend. I, I only ask this, Matt, because sometimes the transfer portal is weird. Can Tennessee still make a play here, or have they written him off to A&M? It doesn't feel like they can make a play here, Josh. I think coming out of that visit, there was a lot of optimism. It went very well. He, he saw the opportunity that Tennessee presented. But then I think when the family huddled back up, there was a chance to stay in Texas, be closer to his family. And, and I think ultimately that was the deciding factor for him. Mm. All right. Let's get to the headline name here, and that is Zalant Hurd. He's leaving LSU. The announcement came last week, and his first visit is to Tennessee. What are your sources saying, Matt, coming out of this big visit for Zalance Hurd? It was a good visit for Zalance Hurd. Um, you know, I think short, it was a short window trip because he turned around and got right on the plane and went to Oklahoma. And right now it seems like those are the two programs that this one's coming down to. We'll see where it goes if he doesn't commit to one of those two programs, you know, by the midpoint of this week. I think there's some optimism on the Oklahoma side, and I think some of that probably comes – from the fact that they were able to get him, you know, to Norman after he tripped to Tennessee. Um, I think everything went well with the Lance Hurd. I think Tennessee made it very clear what the opportunity is there, but this is kind of a wait and see for the Vols now. It's, it's not a recruitment that was shut down over the weekend. So again, a big name that you just have to keep swinging on. It, it feels like a, a must for Tennessee to land one of these guys here down the stretch. Yeah, as Lance heard, probably the biggest name on the board. Why do you think he shuts it down? I mean, he went into the transfer portal probably not even a week ago, maybe five or six days ago is when he officially hit the portal. Why do you think it comes to an end potentially midweek? You know, I, no, I probably misspoke there. Just if he doesn't shut this down here by midweek for these two programs, then where does it go? You know, I got just you, in, right. Kind of in terms of that window, where does it go? You know, for Tennessee, it feels like I think no matter how good the visit went, the further this one goes, the the more you lose momentum. Yeah, yeah, I get you. As it stands right now, it seems like a two-team race. And like you said, these guys can come off the board after a visit. So we'll see what happens. But I know Ole Miss also trying to get hurt on campus. Why not? Um, Matt, anybody else on the radar right now that Tennessee's recruiting? Because like I said, if there's a big name in the portal, they're most likely on it. Anybody else Tennessee fans should keep an eye on? Yeah, Tennessee would love to get Diego Pounds to campus. The, the guy that's been protecting Drake May for the last two years. So, obviously, yep. you know, why would you not want to get a guy like that to campus? We'll see if it happens. Um, you know, it's felt like it was going to at a couple of points, but right now it, it's pretty in limbo. So, we'll see where it goes. But Tennessee would love to get Diego Pounds to campus. Yeah, and he's the best available right after Zalance Heard. So, Diego Pounds would be a huge get to get him on campus as well. Uh, all this offensive line talk. What about Gerald Mincy? I know, you know, he's leaving Tennessee. Well, he's in the portal, but is there a chance they could reel him back in? 
You never say never nowadays, Josh. I mean, we've, we've seen in this portal cycle guys that announce their intentions to go to the portal. They never make it. They enter, they're back out. Um, you know, I, I don't see it right now with Tennessee and Gerald Mincy, but again, you never say never. You and never we'll know. Kind of where things go with Tennessee is they continue to recruit the tackle position. That could definitely, you know, shake things up if Mincy's still out there and hasn't found a home. All right. Well, all this craziness is hard to follow, but you guys at VolQuest do a great job explaining it all, covering it all. It's it's awesome. Thank you, Matt Ray, for dropping by, taking a little bit of time on this Monday morning to talk transfer portal on the inside scoop. Appreciate you. Yeah, Josh, appreciate you. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.